In this episode, I am once again joined by Dr. Nida Chenak Tsan, Master of Tibetan Medicine and spiritual teacher of the Utah Nyantik tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. Dr. Nida reveals why in 2021 he withdrew from public teaching to take an extended personal retreat lasting the year, and details the overall structure, daily routine, and specific practices that he engaged. Dr. Nida recalls the obstacles he encountered and how he overcame them and shares the powerful experience towards the end of his retreat that caused lasting significant change in his personality and activity. Dr. Anita also discusses the danger of ego inflation and narcissism in spiritual practice, the serious psychological risks of rigorous training, and offers his advice for those who wish to embark on meditation retreat. So without further ado, Dr. Anita Chenatsang. Dr. Anita Chenatsang, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Tashtile. Thank you for inviting me again. I'm so delighted to be talking with you today. And uh, actually, on a very interesting topic, we're going to talk a little bit about retreat practice. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, you undertook an extended personal retreat. And you withdrew at that time from public teaching for several months. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what led to that decision. What was the reason? for you to undertake such a, a long, relatively long retreat. And what did you do on the retreat? <laughs> so you want to reveal all my secrets. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think you are one of the uh, early interview you asked me. So, you know, I was always fascinated about the retreats. And, uh, m- you know, because for me when you say retreat is being in the nature you know with yourself and you know you can have a really completely different experience and then uh my hometown is the you know the the place the birthplace of the the root guru shapkar shapkarpa you know shapkar and uh, he was the most famous like uh, retreat yogi you know and so I used to read a lot of uh, his biography and his teachings about how important retreat and so on. But then <clears throat> from 1991 to 1998, I had a chance you know, to do different retreats in central Tibet when I was in Lhasa. But those are mostly like one week to three weeks of retreats, many like short retreats and so on. So I was always fascinated about uh, retreat, you know. And then, yeah, that was a, one of my dream, okay, one of my lifetime dream, but somehow, you know, you are busy for studying, then busy for work, then you are busy, uh, you know, you have been busy for traveling, I never had time. And I would say, I have to thanks for the, you know, the pandemic time. So it kind of, uh, you know, we can, you know, we can say it's a bad time, but it's up to us how we use it, right? You know, maybe, yeah, it is a harsh time for, you know, all of us. And, uh, but we can always use the time in a different way. So I thought, okay, this is the time for retreat. And, you know, and then I decided to make the retreat to, to realize my old dream. But then, of course, I was planning to go to Himalaya, to Nepal, you know, so uh, in the Ganglachi, there's a very famous retreat uh, uh, place. It's also a retreat place for Milaripa. And also Shapkarpa being there. And historically, it says also the, uh, the Yuto was there for three months. Actually, there's a cave for Yuto. So that was kind of my goal. I said, OK, at least I want to go there you know, to retreat. But then because of the, the pandemic, it didn't happen you know, for travel. It's very complicated, all these things, vaccination, traveling. So I decided to stay at home, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's the, the how the retreat happened. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the Lung Chimba, the great uh, Nyingma Ba Master Lung Chimba says, Jikten uh, Chawa Shashur Sentime. He says the worldly, you know, activities, <clears throat> little by little, it never ends. 
actually it's true you know right every day we have to do something you know we finish one plan or one project and we say okay it's finally done but next day there's another one is coming or maybe more are coming you know we're always uh, kind of we get caught in the circle of the life activities it's never finishing never ending right so jitin chawa shashur sindhi me you know a little bit here a little bit there and never finish your work right and then namshak dina sambat chunyeyan so when you stop doing anything when you drop everything then you are done you know then you are free from everything so i really like that his uh, long chamber's expression you know because if we say oh you know this is important that is important we never finish we are always being busy and there is always a reason or there is always there is always something to do right so maybe it's not the things we have to do but maybe it's our connection to the things we feel we have to do it you know we have to finish it so that's why once you drop it then that's it you know things things stop by themselves right but then things will move by themselves it's like even we stop is not like everything stops you know right so that's why i really like that i took that uh, long chimba's uh, teaching so therefore yeah i just uh, you know left everything behind and teachings and these things and yeah i dedicated my time for retreat so i did the first uh, part of retreat and then um between there's a kind of short break and then i did the second time of retreat so it went very well of course yeah this time i focused everything for the yotonitic practice you know and uh, when i was in lhasa i did, did a, a you know retreat of longchinti and then also dungeon tersa there are many different kind of practices and uh, so this time i just wanted to you know to finish the whole the yotonitic practice but then i I said also i don't want to rush to say oh i have you know completed all the numbers and i finished this and that i just want to go with the flow you know so you do the practice and try to finish different kind of practices and mostly to go go through my experiences and intuition and feeling and so on yeah so it went very well actually it went very well and um, yeah i maybe in the beginning you know i w- yeah i was having more expectations you know i say okay i have to finish all kind of yotonity practices in few months and then you know i had a kind of plan and then this and that and you know okay i have to make a perfect altar you know offering and you know the so the luckily we have a very nice uh, um shrine room here at home so i i, I stayed here in shrine room and uh, yeah so it went very well so i i was but i would say the first part of my retreat and then the pause and the break and then the second part of retreat is kind of very different experiences you know so the first part of retreat uh, about 3 months i just wanted to do it a really like classical and traditional way you know every day how many hours you know you do meditation you finish your mantra accumulation so like kind of like a schedule right every day you finish the schedule and this and then yeah that was good because this is exactly what i want to do i want to finish so i did that and uh, then the second part of retreat i was thinking like okay i'm doing the retreat of course you know the practice is important but who is the practitioner myself is the practitioner so in this case i need to follow my own rhythm you know my own capacity and to reflecting more like inner world to understand self and you know how you feel how you experience this and that so that's why it's so one first part of retreat i would say it's a very like a technical you know technical very traditional style and rules and you know offerings alters this and then the second part is more freestyle well that's very interesting could you give a sense of what sort of a routine you are following in the first half of the retreat the first section and then how that changed when you entered the second section well the first one like you know <clears throat> you get uh, morning early and you do the breathing exercises 
and do morning session and then you know you do uh, you have breakfast and then you start to practice a uh, preliminary practices you know each of uh, practices you do like one mala and uh, then you go in the guru yoga you know there is a session so that's uh, until the lunch time and then <clears throat> after lunch again you know i have specific mantras to finish mostly like mantra accumulations and visualizations this and then um yeah <clears throat> until a tea break you know then after that tea break again and then in the evening if i didn't finish the mantras on that day every day like i had kind of uh, targets you know for example one short mantra i did uh, 100000 mantra uh, in 7 days so that that you know in 7 days to finish 100000 mantra is a short mantra but that took time you know sometimes every day i have a plan if i didn't finish it and then after dinner i do it in the night you know until go to sleep but then in the evening there is the protector mahakala you know puja or prayer and so on so that's why yeah mostly i did a, a, we call it four tunes like four sessions you know and you know this morning session morning early session and then after breakfast session and then after lunch session and then break the four and sometimes i did uh, like five sessions and and so on yeah so that's why it's very kind of, uh, you know, I, I normally I know when I did uh, in the past, when I did the retreat, this is how we do, you know, then, yeah, I, I think, yeah, that is the blessing of the first part of the retreat too, you know, so that's why actually I'm really happy, whatever I did, you know, accumulation, you know, sometimes we say, oh, we don't need to focus on the numbers, accumulations, this and that, you know, important to understand. But I think in a way, everything has a reason, right? Every practice, there is a reason. And uh, if I didn't do, if I skip that part in the beginning, maybe later I say, oh, I could have done that or something is missing, you know? So that's why it's a kind of two really different style. And then, what do you say? But at the end, I really felt it's kind of completed, you know? Of course, then there's the second part of retreat is more like free flow, you know. So in the morning, I yeah, get up and more like contemplation and meditation, you know, not uh, in the mode of like, uh, what do you say? Oh, you have to do, you know, this is your today's plan, you know, how many mantras you have to finish, what you should do, which text you should uh, read, you know, and this and that. Okay, you know, I had a nice dream and, uh, you know, some experiences. I have to take notes and this and that, right? So the first uh, about three months, I was very much in these things, you know, raking, you know, notes and dreams and this is a kind of, uh, you are really kind of in, in the in the retreat, but then, you know, again, is another kind of engagement, right? You are engaging in the retreat. So you have plan. And I was saying, you know, I drop everything externally working and all these things. But then inside yourself with your practice, you know, you become kind of very dynamic, you know. And then every day is kind of full and then you go to sleep and then this and that. And uh, yeah, so then the next, the second part was uh, really like kind of free flow. And then I really also, actually all this kind of, uh, uh, how do you call it? Very kind of systematic, you know, very technical and uh, calculating the numbers and this and that. Actually, it's kind of helped me, you know. At the end, I said, yes, I'm the meditator, you know, I need to relax, right? So it's, the, it's accumulating numbers and, you know, using the mind concentration and focus and this and that. And so at the end is what, right? At the end is self-discovery. And self-discovery, so we can go through the systems and techniques and, you know, accumulation of mantras and so on. But the most important is really completely relax and have time for yourself, 100%, right? So in a way, yeah, having time for yourself, you can say it's being mindful, but really truly being with yourself. And then... In, in in that way, I really had this kind of feeling like, oh, you know, we think, oh, I need to meditate, 
meditate, you know, oh, I, I, I need to make a time for meditation, oh, I don't have time for meditation. We think meditation is somewhere there, you know, we have to take time for it, we have to do this, we have to do this. We are not realizing that, that if we are relaxed, you know, that state, you know, our selves uh, relaxation state, and uh, in a mindful way, and that's it. And that is the process of meditation, right? So that's why, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's a very, how do you say, free flow style. But the part I was very happy is there's no conflict, you know. I think in the spiritual is like this, you know. Some people says, oh, don't do mantras, you know, don't do mondo preliminary practice. Oh, these things we don't need it. It all the style, blah blah blah. Then you know you only like do like awareness and mindfulness is kind of kind of really refine the meditation. This is this is the correct one. That is the old one, the wrong one. This I think many of these things are it's you know when we have uh, this kind of views, kind of conflictive, you know, practices are different, and you know this and that. I think then then it's probably it's a kind of misunderstanding about meditation, you know. Yeah, so that's why, yeah, you know, even I did in a very different style, but I really felt this kind of balance and harmony, internal balance and harmony. So that's why I'm saying, you know, I had uh, in the beginning the pushing myself to go to Himalaya, stay in the cave, cave in the nature, you know, being yourself alone and, you know, you know, you know, to collect your own water and make your own tea and really like old style of yogi style. And then the second, in the first session, I was really thinking and hoping, you know, there's expectation and wish and this and second one, I was completely relaxed, you know, wherever you stay is the same, you know, you're in Italy, in the Himalaya. Of course, we believe the blessing, blessing of the nature, you know, Negi Chenlab, we call Negi Chenlab means the nature has a blessing energy. But if we don't relax, we don't receive, you know, right? <laughs> Otherwise, everybody goes to Bodh Gaya, you get enlightened. You know, you can go to Bodh Gaya, it's a holy place for Buddhist people. But if you don't, if you don't relax, you know, if you don't find this inner peace, and even enlightened place cannot bless you, right? So that's why all this kind of wish and expectation and I want to do this and that everything was completely kind of, you know, relaxed. And so, yeah, that's why I was uh, really kind of happy and uh, to finding uh, inner harmony, you know, within myself. That's very interesting. In the second um, phase of your retreat, did you have any routine at all, or did you just do whatever you wanted to do that day? Was there any structure? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, of course, and I'm in the retreat, so you know, maybe if I wake up a little bit late, I'm not kind of blaming myself, not rushing. Oh, you are late. You know, you have to meditate. You have to finish. I was out of that kind of mode. You know, so when you naturally wake up earlier, okay, meditate. If you wake late, okay, meditate. You know. While you are sleeping, dreaming, if you realize you are dreaming, it's good. You are meditating in the dream. Whenever you wake up, it's good. You know, just continue. Do you understand? So there is no like rule and schedule and I have to finish and this and that. So I didn't have that kind of, uh, how do you say, push inside myself. And then, of course, then, yeah, you are in retreat and you don't do anything. <laughs> so if you you have to follow that things and then you go there okay you feel like uh, do the basic practices and then just contemplating awareness you know whatever there you know just there if you hear there's some disturbing sounds or something is here there it's okay just you know part of the life and part of the universe you know let everything flow right mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't, of course, I kind of uh, do my routine this, but in a very, you know, for example, in my altar, first part, you know, every morning I offer the water, I make sure the water offering incense, everything's kind of perfect, this and that. And the second one, I removed my altar, I don't have altar, I didn't have altar, you know, 
I had one Yuto statue and then just one crystal, you know. So, you know, when you have an altar, you have attention to altar, you know, you have to take care of altar. You know, I know altar, it's a kind of a reminder, right? The altar and the Buddhas, they remind us that we need to be mindful, you know. We have to train our spiritual practices and to, to remembering the greater gurus, greater teachings of Buddhas, you know. And, and of course, the altar kind of reminding us to make a connection. And, uh, but then also we should not get uh, stuck, you know, or too attached to the things, you know, oh, my, my golden statue, you know, oh, I have to do this, oh, because, you know, the, yes, statues are, you know, important statues, but they are, you know, Buddha nature is always within ourselves, right? We have to see Buddha nature is in the statue or, or Buddha nature is within ourselves. But if you realize the Buddha nature is within ourselves, and then that statue also, it's a reflection of that. You know, do you understand? So otherwise we think, okay, everything's important in the altar. So Buddha is there. I receive blessing from Buddha, you know, this and that. And Buddha and I, there is a separation. There is a division. And then every day I think, oh, I need to respect the Buddha. Oh, I need to do the offering. Oh, I need, you see, your mind is always out, Right. The aim of the retreat is bring everything inside and it's an inner realization. But once you really feel and confident with the inner Buddha nature and then outside there is a Buddha or not, it, it's the same. You see a flower. Yes, it is a Buddha. It is an offering for Buddha, right? It is a piece of universe. It is the universe too. Do you understand? So that's why I think this kind of inner, uh, how do you say, understanding is really, really important. I'm wondering if you undertook any special kind of diet. Sometimes on these sorts of retreats, one might take a special chulen. Uh, you, you've, you've talked about that elsewhere. I'm wondering if you undertook any kind of diet on this retreat. Yeah, I did a little bit, the first part, yeah. Uh -huh. First part, I did a little bit, you know, changing the diet. And uh, yeah, as I said, the first part was very much like a very all a kind of, you know, system and rules and structures and all these things you know when you do practice you finish mundo the preliminary practice then your guru yoga then you have the deity practices then dakini practice so the good thing is in the yuto all the practices are short you know and then there are some practices you have to do lots of visualization and uh, mantra chanting so some practices there's no mantra and mainly you know what do you say, mainly like contemplation, meditation. And then sometimes, you know, some meditation, you need a kind of supporter, a butter lamp or candle or crystal, or even the mirror's light reflection. You know, there are some kind of uh, external supporters. You try to use all these things, you know, right? So your lifestyle is important, you know, your lifestyle is important, get enough sleep. And uh, your discipline is important. Every day you have to do the, all this, you know, the, 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 the retreat program you have to finish. And your diet and, you know, you try to be aware of this. And then do some physical exercises, prostration or yoga and this and that. So the first part is really kind of taking care of all these different parts, you know. So that's why actually, you know, it can be very engaging. It's lots of things are moving there, right? Is not you go to a center, you know, you do a few hours of shamatha and then, you know, food is ready for you and this and that, you know. So, yeah. And I'm wondering if you encountered any obstacles or challenges during either phase of your retreat. Sometimes it's said, isn't it, that um, these sorts of retreats or retreats in general can bring one face to face I, with this tension. is i did a home in the home shrine uh -huh. so i i told you you know my head is fixed in the himalayan mountains and caves actually that's I, what i did also when i was in tibet my head is fixed and then here at home you know you can hear the kids you know kind of sometimes they're running around and you tell them you are in the retreat maybe you know for them, okay, dad is at home, you know, in the shrine, this and that. And when we want, we just go in, you know. 
So I can't say, okay, you guys cannot come in. So do you understand this kind of like a ordinary family lifestyle? And that was kind of interesting. In the beginning, it's kind of disturbed for me, right? So solitary retreat yourself. And, you know, you should not meet with other people. And uh, yeah, you know, you do all the practices, this and that. So maybe I had this expectation that my kids and they understand, you know, that they, they, res you know, they respect, they understand, and, you know, they don't enter in the shrine room and this and that. But then, you know, of course, <laughs> kids, uh, kids did it the freestyle. So in the beginning, I don't call it uh, obstacles, but it's kind of discomfort, you know. It's discomfort, not so happy, you know. Okay, I have to concentrate, you know. No kids and, you know, no this. Or sometimes I hear some, you know, talking argument from neighbors, some noises, this and that. So I was thinking, oh, if I'm in Himalaya, it's different, right? And then, oh, this pandemic, it's good because of the pandemic. I'm in the retreat, but it's bad. I can't go to in Himalaya and the caves. And, you know, this kind of, uh, I would say the it's not an external obstacle, you know, more like a internal emotional obstacles, right? But these things actually, it's really helped me. And then in a way, then you think, oh, these, these are things in the normal and the regular life, you know. Also, you feel like kind of, uh, you know, maybe we behave this way, right? You know, especially here, we talk about uh, individualism, you know, my individual space. You know, I'm in the retreat and you, you know, everybody have to respect me and this and that kind of, uh, you know, you try to make yourself special and you're expecting others to respect you. You know, this kind of thing, it's, 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 and at the end I relaxed. Then I was thinking, okay, that's nice too, you know. For example, uh, yeah, the one of my retreat I was contemplating and very good experience, meditation, bliss, you know, whatever. It's really like openness, relaxation, <sighs> you know, like you are dissolving into kind of like the uh universe of awareness and uh, <laughs> yeah blissful and so on and my boy comes in and he says ah baba you know it's tea is ready something like this and that and so i didn't answer him i was contemplating he said hey, hey, do you hear me like you know <laughs> do you hear me <laughs> tea is ready or he said something funny you know this and that so then I thought, uh, mm, you know, this kind of, I thought, oh, you know, if I'm in a cave, if I experience this, maybe this kind of experience can last many hours or days and this and that. I said, now because of my boy, it's a kind of interrupted the, the feeling. But then, then after that, I kind of rethinking, I said, oh, that's nice too, you know, right? This, this is what life is. You know, it's not like I escape from the life and society and then maybe you get enlightened in the cave and you still stay in the cave and, you know, not connecting with society. We have to, you know, we are in the retreat and we are meditating and doing retreat, but still, if we are functional in society with family, why not? You understand? So then we don't need to say, oh, you know, and this, this, oh, no, don't come, you know, don't disturb me. I meditate, ah, like this. Then, then you see your meditation is not working, right? So, you know, I try to protect this kind of uh, I and, you know, I and the self, I'm meditating, you know, don't you see it? Why you disturb me? So normally this, this can be like our kind of reaction. And, and these things really help to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this kind of like more internal emotional obstacles. I think, yeah, at, at end, uh, and the retreat obstacles, I would say they are all like mental obstacles or psychological obstacles, you know. I think at end is like that, right? Even, you know, I don't know, maybe something happens very har harsh, you know, in the real physical thing. If your mind is relaxed, maybe you can find another solution, this and that. 
in a way everything will be okay but if you don't find you know this kind of inner balance you can complain about everything right oh it's too hot oh it's too cold you know oh it's too noisy oh it's this and that you know so yeah mm -hmm. that's uh actually makes me curious about after the retreat when you came out of it and you have to go back to work and uh emails and dealing with people and all the things like that uh how was that did you have any uh difficulty uh or uh yeah challenges integrating back into um, your life um I, yeah, maybe, I don't know, it's a difficulty or I see a change, you know, I see a change because, uh, you know, I used to be very active in social media and Facebook and WeChat, you know, these things. And uh, so, yeah, during the my retreat, I had to contact a little bit with my mom, you know, so I was happy, you know. Yeah, two months ago, she passed away. So I was happy. She was very proud of my retreat. And, you know, I talked about my experiences with her because she she did lots of retreats too. She loves retreats. So that was a kind of our very special connection. And, uh, yeah, there is, you know, there is a change. And um, I don't say it it is uh, difficulties. I would say more, I have more clarity, you know. I have more clarity, something I need to do, I do something maybe I don't need to do, I just don't need to do, you know. So like why I need to updating my Facebook every day or every week. If I fail, I do, if I don't fail, I, I must, I'm, I, I thought like my relation with social media, the most important is I feel free, right? I post something maybe, I don't know, the. The goal is I want to show my image or I want to show a nice picture and this and that. And then some people, they say, oh, you know, you should post. And then, you know, we know like you are OK. We know you are this. And the past, I said, yes, yes. You know, I'm now I'm here. Now I'm there. So then some people says, oh, why you do show off? You know, we know you are traveling a lot. You know, you go somewhere and you're always showing your places. Then I think, oh, it's it's right, you know, then maybe I should not show. And then some people says, oh, if your post is nice, you know, we know where you are. Then I think, okay, post, do you understand? So I, I'm kind of try to flow according to public opinion or people, what they like to wish to have this and that. I try to make everyone happy. So after retreat, you know, I said, I can't make everyone happy and I just need to be myself. If I feel post, I post, you know. And if I don't feel post, I don't post. This is my life, you know. So, yeah, then some people, you know, they, they write to me so much. And, you know, they always, I know some people, they don't need to say, oh, you know, I'm doing this, this every day. They don't need to update to me. Why do you need to update to me? You know, normally I said, okay, it's important to be there for everyone, so sometimes it's a kind of useless self-sacrifices, right? You know, you're always there. You try to make people happy, this and that. And that's why, you know, I'm also very happy with our, our consular class <laughs> to learn about this uh, compassion at the burnout. So I never got burnout, but I, I, I understand this concept, you know, and also to to seeing the lines clearly, you know, what is me, myself, and my life, and my dharma practice, and my teachings, and, uh, you know, many things that are not necessary to make public. Why should I make public about my travel? You know, of course, if there's a teaching, you know, to say, okay, it's my teaching, this and that. So that's why I don't say it's a difficult, but I have a different way to, I don't know, to behave or to, to be myself, you know. So then I know I have much more time for myself, you know, much more time for family, much more time for, you know, reading books and, you know, writing something. So actually I wrote uh, two commentaries. One is Yuto's Ati Yoga and one is Yuto's Mahamudra. So all these things actually was really good, you know. Then I was surprised. I said, wow, it's so nice to have time for yourself, you know. 
it's so nice to be with yourself <laughs> right because then i really kind of saw myself i'm this kind of like a energy you know the energy wave and you're always connected with others and vibrating here and there and this and that da, da, da. you know you i always had kind of good intention to help others so maybe i think oh this is altruistic it's good you know to do for it's good for swarikpa for tibetan medicine you know i'm like kind of teaching and spreading this teaching and helping people and this and that but i think it's important to have more time, you know, for myself too. And so that's why, yeah, I have, um, yeah, I'm more relaxed and uh, I know I have, uh, I've changed for these things. You know, it's not, I don't respect people. If they say, oh, it's nice, they this, I feel I do. I don't feel I don't do, why, you know, right? And uh, yeah, then maybe you like a new toy instagram you post something there maybe i don't know in a few days i don't feel i give up it's okay for me so i'm not like this kind of the you know oh to in order to be successful you have to be on facebook on instagram and this and that da, 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 da. so you know i'm really relaxed i say so what <laughs> and then i know some people are saying what happened to you after like uh, your retreat you know you're not uh, writing much you are not uh, like uh, uh, you know contacting and you are you are different than before you know you know i text you many times how are you you don't answer this and that and so i can see also the i can see people's nature better too you know you understand so in the in the past i i i, I still don't judge people you know, in the past, I just put myself there and try to be a kind of helpful person, you know, good heart person. You do whatever you can, you know, kind of this and that. And now, now I think twice. Something is really necessary or not, you know. If not, it's okay. Let it go. <laughs> so, yeah. In a, in a one word, I would say after retreat, I'm more relaxed. Uh -huh. that relax in a wise way you know in an understanding way right it's not i don't care other people you know some people are kind of i know they have some maybe even some medical health issues you know and they always want something from you i said please you know just contact with your professional doctor you need a professional treatment and that's the right thing you know so what i can tell you in my teaching my this and that i told you you know but I have a limit too. So you see this kind of thing. I know the generally people can understand and they can, I think they can understand, they can see, but I know some people, maybe they have some issues for them is kind of uh, in a kind of uh, negative way they attach it to me, you know, they want to hear from me. Come on, you know, somebody, everything's okay, you know. Why, why you are sending me what breakfast you are having, you know, what lunch you are having. And okay, you go for a walk, you see something nice, you know. Yeah, you, you enjoy by yourself, you enjoy with your family, you enjoy with your kids. You enjoy if somebody really close, right? So I'm a teacher, you know, for that person, I'm a teacher. You don't need to update me, you know, all these things. Of course, I don't answer. Do you understand? So that's why, yeah, I can see this kind of change and uh, relaxed. And this retreat uh, really helped me a lot, mm -hmm. you know. In a way, uh, in the Dharma, we can say many things, but in a way, really, to, to understand, to understand myself and my life, and also to understand about other people's mentality and their conditions and society and for so many things, you know. So at end, I really ap appreciate my own retreat, but in a normal way, I, I always think for all of us, it's very important to take time for ourselves, you know, right? And maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe not that essential to finish all the you know hundred thousand of mantras and this and that but it's more essential to know ourselves better and to through knowing ourselves better and we know others much better too and then we can really how do you say 
we can build up a kind of really uh, how do you call it like the friendship or whatever you know around us is kind of healthy and stable and with more harmony right you know otherwise kind of you know maybe in the past i was sometimes you know your work and teaching you are stressed but even you are stressed you say okay you know i ignore my stress i want to help somebody else right or even you know somebody is this and that ah it's okay you know this is that so yeah so maybe I'm not that uh, judgmental, but I analyze, do you understand? Maybe in the past, I didn't want to analyze, more kind of impulsive, you know? So be more like a human, use your heart and act, right? And now I say, yes, it's true, but I, we have to bring our, uh, how do you say, intelligence. So that's why I'm talking about this uh, <laughs> super intelligence. I like this emotional intelligence. I think. This is also what Dharma about, you know, yeah. So that's why I don't say it's a kind of spiritual realization, but it's a kind of really beautiful inner understanding, self-understanding, you know. It really opens a kind of different world and you see it, everything is a kind of different way. And uh, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. Did something happen on the retreat that caused a shift in this way? Or, <laughs> yes, would, you yes, say, yes. <laughs> or, or, or would you say it was a sort of combination of everything coming together? But it sounds like something happened. What happened? <laughs> yes, yes, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all these things, it was nice, you know, retreat and this and that. Everything is nice and I do this and that. So something happened, I would say maybe that's the youth of the blessing, you know. So then when I think of back and the first one, I really did all the, you know, very classical way, traditional way, you know, to finish mantras, many, many, many these. I know I am kind of pushing and this and that and this. And then the second retreat, um, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? What happened? <laughs> what happened to you? Actually, I had a very beautiful yeah um meditative experiences you know so what i can say is that experience is speechless and that was so beautiful because all inclusive you know i'm not an exclusive yogi or practitioner all inclusive you know and all human minds are beautiful right so all of us we have buddha nature and we are equal I don't say, you know, I did retreat, I'm special, I'm Tibetan, I'm special, you know, I'm a Swarikpa doctor, I'm, no. And, and the discovery, it's a kind of self-discovery, but it's discovery of the, you know, the collective mind, right? You know, every individual, every humans, they have a beautiful Buddha mind, you know, Buddha nature. And uh, yeah, including animals and insect. So in a way, you know, we always want to do like a retreat is very exclusive, right? By yourself, you know, individual, by yourself, you know, you are in your cave. You see, so that's the interesting part. I, 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 you know, my retreat, my journey, my mountain, my cave, my story, you know, my I and this and that is like kind of, it's like we are in, inside of a ball, you know, it's like a kind of spiritual capsule around us. It's invisible, do you understand? So then, oh, this I is becoming so special. Yes, it's my journey, you know. Yes, I did a retreat. Yes, I did a mantra. And yes, I'm a meditator. This kind of exclusiveness, you know. Oh, I'm, I do, I don't know, Mahamudra practice, I do at yoga, I know Rikpa, you know, I'm special. When we say I'm special, we are inside of this invisible, very negative, egoistic ca capsule inside, but we don't see that, that's the problem. So my, this experience, that's why I'm saying it's not something inclusive, it's, it's all, you know, not exclusive, it's all inclusive. You just relax and open and connect, you know. And then, so that's why you get this kind of, uh, I think, it's a kind of like a deep relaxation, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, we have emotions. Yes, we have thoughts and this and that. You know, let them flow, right? Like the clouds, you know. You know, there's a dark cloud. Why we have to shoot the dark cloud? We are scared of the, the storm and this and that, you know. And, uh, you know, right? So what we can do, what we can do, what we can do, what we can do, we can do. But the nature has its own nature and let it flow. You know, let it flow. Time has time its own nature, let it flow. We don't need to get stuck in the past. We don't need to run into the future. And also we don't need to stuck now and here to saying, ah, oh, now and here, now and here. Now and here can become a capsule too, <laughs> right? Yes, I'm now and here, but this now and here includes past and future too. So I'm free from now and I'm, yeah, I'm in now and here, but meanwhile, I'm free from now and here too, because past is here, future is here too, right? I'm not panic about our future. I'm not depressed about our past. All are good, all are beautiful. <laughs> so that kind of experience, yeah. The good thing is I'm happy because my experience uh, is, uh, how do you say, um, is uh, speechless, so, you know, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, I read uh, Long Chimba's work, you know, uh, at Yoga, Zokpa Chimbo's text, Long Chimba's work. And uh, then, uh, you know, it's not I just to read many books. And some of this, it's a kind of more intuitive, you know. The good thing is in my shrine room, I have a small library too. So I read some books and uh, and I intuitive. I say, okay, I feel like to read a Patra Rinpoche's book, you know, during my sessions, I read. And uh, so, for example, that also helped me a lot, you know. <laughs> That's why Yuto said, uh, the black guru without, uh, without anger. So he referred to the book. And for me, that was really as a wow, you know. So I was thinking if I was in the cave, you know, in the Himalayan cave, you know, and say, oh, you know, I'm so special. I'm in the cave. When I come out from the cave, you know, I can tell people what is my experience, you know, how brave you have been and this and that. But then maybe in the cave, there are no books. So here I accept what my condition is. I, you know, during the sessions, I read some books. And that's why, yeah, my... Second part of retreat, some people, they come, they want to meet me, I meet, I drink some tea and, you know, to be, you want to talk something, you know, kind of really freestyle, yeah. That's very interesting. You mentioned people, some people had said to you that they thought you've changed. I'm wondering what, what other kind of response or feedback uh, you've received, particularly from those who are close to you. Did you receive Somebody any? Somebody said, are you get burnout? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> because maybe I'm not, uh, how do you say, like, I'm not saying, I'm not that kind of reverent communicator with this and that. You know, I just relax, <laughs> enjoy, you know. Maybe also not like everything what we have to, you know, what we think is we just pour out and say and this and that to saying, oh, you know, retreat is, is I'm not that mode, you know, right? But maybe that was a joke, you know, somebody says, oh, after retreat, I get burnout. So I, I, I like that too, you know, I'm, a, you know, if somebody think I get burnout, I'm okay. But maybe I was thinking, I understand why they say it, because I'm not in that kind of really kind of very active, like dynamic mode, you know. And then, so yeah, some people says, oh, you are changed, you know, you are more wise and calm and slow. You know, maybe in the past I said, I want to do so many things, you know, this project, that project, you know, let publish books and this and that, you know. It's not, uh, yeah, some people, they think like I'm kind of really running and rushing, you know, to build my own image, to become famous, to become... Uh, well-known doctor guru this but for myself you know what is clear for me is of course i want to dedicate for my life for so Tibet medicine and yutoniti i never had doubt so there is money and there's no money i want to do it you know it's it's like my passion it's my love i want to do it right so that's why yeah before retreat i was always kind of like bring out and spread and this and this and this 
you know so after retreat during retreat i felt also really the very the the ultimate blessing of utah you know so yeah and uh, then you know it, it's good what i you know what what i did was good you know so it's it's not necessary i need to continue like that you know also it's not i'm scared of people's reputation what you say i don't care but one thing what 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 is clear for my heart what i want to do i want to do but what i want to do i can do in a relaxed way too right and uh, yeah also the people who is working and some people they want to continue work with me it's good some people maybe they feel you know they go their way it's good too you know i respect everyone you know it's not as oh you know you're my student and we have to do this you have a samaya you have a commitment this i'm not that kind of mode at all you know i really like that yuto says you know you know if you have faith in me you know i bring you happiness to happiness if you hate me i bring you happiness to happiness so i think yeah that is a ultimate like a spiritual uh, expression right if you really have a spiritual quality somebody hate you somebody love you you should treat them in equally you know we should not go too much in human emotion right okay that's i'm talking about you talk you know i'm not like that i can have many human emotions but uh, no i i see things differently you know so that's that's the thing you know i know also uh some people they do tibetan retreat like 3 years of retreat and um, and then what is their mindset is this exclusiveness individualism and specialization you know i i did 3 years and 3 weeks of retreat you know i'm specialized in the retreat and now my title is a lama or now my title is a is a guru my title is a special teacher you know and then the want you know because of of course the retreat is something very exclusive but come on you are a practitioner but you are normal human too we should not forget the human nature right and uh, so then some people they come out they say oh you know now i'm a teacher okay i don't want to do any works you know i just teach something and uh, yeah, everybody have to respect me. Everybody must respect me. Everybody must bring the offerings, you know. And because of their karma, because then they can accumulate merit and this and that. So I think this kind of uh, result, the mentality is kind of very negative, you know. Do you understand? Because the more you know Dharma, the more you practice, you have to become like an easier and simpler person. And many people, I think, they become more complicated. You know, they become more egoistic, and they get blocked this kind of negative ego, and they don't see it. That's the problem. You know, and then they need to dress specially. You know, they need to act differently. Even this seat, and they need to sit in a higher seat. And yeah, I think it's really ridiculous. You know. You know, if you really truly understand your nature is the Buddha nature and you have to know anyone is next to you and they have exactly the same Buddha nature. So why you don't respect that Buddha nature, right? Why you think this Buddha nature is so precious and I don't care about that Buddha nature. So that's why, yeah, I think, yeah, some people, when they do this kind of very exclusive way of doing retreat and then the self-importance you know i did this and i'm important and this and that i don't know this this is a little bit disturbing and i know many people are suffering you know after long retreats because because they don't get you know they don't get uh, what they wished for you, you know they had too many expectations you know maybe they think okay three years of retreat you know it's a three years i have to plan in my life that's true you have to plan your life and this and that and you know it's like okay i have to plan my college for three years you know i have to plan my phd three years i do study and research i finish my thesis okay now i'm a doctor i'm expert you can say that that's in samsara 
yes, you are, you are a doctor, you are expert in this field, this and that. I think we have this kind of mentality. And in the Dharma, okay, I did three years of retreat and now I'm special, you know. This is my diploma. I need to get a job. I, I, I deserve respect, you know. I need a special place. I need this and that. You see, when we, when we mix this uh, Dharma, the spiritual confusion with the ordinary world confusion, then it's, it's a double confusion. Do you understand? Then they don't see their, their place in the, you know, in the normal people's, uh, I don't know, in normal people's place, right? They don't find their seat in normal people's place. And then they struggle. So how they struggle? They struggle with themselves. They get become more nervous, you know, more anxious, more fearful. And then they try to protect them. Then they are always arguing with other people. You know, they have conflict and fights and this and that. And then, then maybe the worst thing is then they are bringing like Dharma quotes, you know. Oh, you know, this Milarepa said this, this. Oh, Longchenpa said this and this. And, and you know, blah, 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 blah. So the quotes is like quotes for themselves. They try to say that what they are doing is right. What they need, what they deserve is the, the right thing. It, it's they try to prove themselves what they say, what they do is right. So it's ridiculous, right? Do you understand? If you are really confident and if your retreat really worked, we must be free from those things. And sometimes people, I think that's like kind of the wrong intention and wrong expectation when they become they come out from the retreat it's it's become very disturbed and i also would say people before they go to retreat i think it would be good if everyone can have a psychological psycho i don't know psychological analysis or checkup you know you know if they are how do you say they are sensitive to depression or psychosis or if they had any stories or not and how about their childhood traumas ptsd i think we have to be careful you know it's not only in the west or now you know it's even in the past some people they do retreat and uh, very bad things can happen right and i know in russia somebody did uh, very, very strict, like uh, six months of retreat. And after that, he come back to the to the city and then he jumped from his apartment and he killed himself. So I'm sure he was suffering from psychosis. And then being in a very, very strict uh, retreat, you know, and, you know, accumulating mantra, this, and it, it make worse, do you understand? So that's why the, the problem is, is not the person, you know, the problem is there's no kind of community or there's a no group of people who could support him. Do you understand? Support those people. And then we know like today there are so many also personality disorders, right? <laughs> I like these Western words, you know, and this... Uh, People are having this, uh, how do you call it? Some people are very uh, psychopath, right? Psychopath, social psychopath. And so, you know, they are psychopath and especially social psychopath. And they do a retreat, I don't know, a few weeks or months or years. When they come back, they are worse psychopath. Because then everything they see in society, they can against. And what the reason they use is all Dharma text. Do you understand? So then like you are the, okay, you are, you don't see you are a psychopath. You see yourself as an accomplished Dharma practitioner and you are attacking the society. That's okay. Maybe you have some reason, but you are attacking everyone, right? Then why, then why you are in society? Then why you don't disappear like a Milarepa? Stay in a Himalayan cave. And if you talk bad about society, about people, about everything, and you really stay in the cave to keep that peace of mind for yourself, that's still good. They can do that, you know. <laughs> so you see, it's very interesting, right? And also this, <laughs> this English word of narcissistic, you know, some people are already kind of narcissistic after retreat, like they empower their narcissistic views. Do you understand? Before they are narcissistic in their way, you know, okay, I'm a businessman. I'm a very successful businessman. Oh, I'm, I was an academic person, very successful academic. 
oh, I, I was a doctor, I was a very good doctor, this and that. So they are very narcissistic in that way. But after retreat, what happens? That, you know, the this part of narcissistic states and the plus spiritual narcissistic. Do you understand? Then even get worse. <laughs> so that's why uh, what I really think is I can understand why even, you know, uh, if I tell you honestly, I know in Tibet there are some monasteries and nunneries, they are very kind of uh, strong for the very, very, very kind of tough retreats, you know, even in the winter you have to stay in a very cold, you know, tents and this and that. And today people take pictures, this, oh, look, you know, how amazing Tibetan monks and nuns, yogis and yoginis. And I know one of the, the, the teacher, the nun, and yeah, she's saying many of them, they, they have crisis during the retreat because the training is too tough, too hard, right? That's one thing. Another thing, actually, for me, Buddha Dharma is a psychology. It's a spiritual psychology. So that's why who are ready to do retreat and who are maybe not that good for doing this kind of retreat i think we have to be we have to be selective you know then it's not like we are kind of selective and closed uh, group you know because if you are like this you can protect more people right so that's why there are lots of confusions there are lots of confusions with uh, with uh, you know, retreats and this. I, I think also this uh, sensorial deprivation, you know, right? When you do the solo retreat, you know, you don't talk to people, not meeting. And then, you know, our we grew up in their society and we are always kind of very active, connecting this and that. Once you really isolate from, you know, from the society completely, this might cause issues too, psychological problems too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, you know, people think, oh, somebody did, uh, you know, many weeks of retreat, many months of retreat, many years of retreat. I'm not surprised. You know, I'm not like, uh, wow, you know, this and that. Sometimes when I hear somebody is in retreat and this and that, I a little bit worry, you know, in the retreat, if they are in the right path or not. And after retreat, if they are still healthy or not. <laughs> Do you understand? So that's why I think to bringing the medical knowledge, at least like Soharikpa knowledge into the retreat and meditation or spiritual practice is very, very essential, right? Because in Soharikpa already says, if we, for example, if we concentrate too much <clears throat> in the heart chakra or in the head chakra, it can cause Sohlong, you know? So Sohlong is more or less like very similar. The symptom of Sohlong is like psychosis, you know? You hear things, you see things, you feel things moving, energy is moving here, there. <clears throat> some people can get very disturbed. And even some, very few monks and nuns, they get killed themselves, you know, in the retreat, right? I think last year somebody told me, oh, a Tibetan tulku, in the, during the three years of retreat, almost finished, and he killed himself. And everybody shocked, you know. How it's possible? How it's possible? Number one is in he's a tulku. Number two is he was in retreat. Number three is he's in a holy place. Okay, he's a tulku. That's his title. He's in retreat. That's retreat is a very strict retreat, and he's in a holy place. You know, this all title, retreat, the the place, they all make sense for me. But what is most important is a mental state, right? What, what, what was uh, happened before, you know, this retreat? Was he stable mentally? This, I don't judge his real tulku or not. I judge him as a normal human. Is his mind is stable or not? And how was his childhood? Did he have a healthy childhood? You know, difficulties, <laughs> PTSD, whatever, right? Or does he suffer from paranoia? I think also this uh, paranoia personality, it's very, very dangerous in Dharma, you know, right? Because then in Tibetan practice, we have many visualizations, <laughs> the deities, protectors. And if you're paranoia about the spirits, this and that, it, it make your 
symptoms much worse okay so uh, of course i'm not saying the good parts you know there are many people they finish the retreat and they see the change and transformation and they become better person better practitioners better teachers whatever i'm really happy for them so we don't need to say much about them you know everything is good but i think today when we talk about the retreat we really have to be careful you know we really have to be careful their mental conditions i know some people when we say oh psychological states and then this oh this is a kind of modern concept it's a western idea they don't like this and that but at the end the human mind is human mind we must be careful you know other than a psychological evaluation or checkup before going into a retreat how can somebody avoid the inflation that you talked about initially the inflation the specialness etc cetera, etc cetera, or indeed any of the other uh, problems on the retreat um other ways to avo- to avoid that or yeah i think I- it's very important that uh, they have a right to view you know so we call yang tak betawa yang tak betawa means the correct view right to view because uh, i think this is very important like in the tibetan buddhism jetsun kaba he focuses a lot about the right to view right so i think that's very important and then you know people are always i think it's important that they are grounded you know it means like they really do the practice from the very basic practices like in the vajrayana we have preliminary practices right like the four uh, mind changing thoughts for example you know to reflect about impermanence and this really is not only just uh, saying oh i i studied for a few days or to really understand the things and they accept the things you know and they really truly know these things so the mondo the preliminary practice once you really is not you finish the retreat of mondo if you really truly understand the mondo and then you are very grounded you know you have a stable base on that stable base you do other practice of this and then you are safe so if you do not have that stable base then you know there is danger something might go wrong right mm-hmm. and also today i think there because there are more like modern people i cannot say only the uh, western people the modern people they are, they have the demanding you know this oh dopa chimbo or mahamudra you know or maybe six yogas you know you know i'm ready you know i just want oh the other things you know prostration is not important for me ah oh, taking refuge is not important these things are like not important you know loving kindness this is not for me you know i'm so you see when people have kind of selective and they are saying what is for me what is not for me i think there is something wrong spiritually you know right because spiritually if you are real spiritual person you are flexible if you are flexible you see the importance of you know importance of uh, all those practices you don't need to be that much selective so i can see in my students when somebody says oh i want to do retreat normally i always uh, you know they ask me what retreat i do i i say do mondro and then somebody says what really do you think i really need to do mondro do you understand so then i have a doubt i say ah it means you know it means they are not grounded for example this is my way of checking you know and some people say oh yeah i love mondo i want to repeat again this and that i say okay then you do a short mondo but do other practices so this is the kind of my way to 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 try to see other people's this do you understand most of the case yeah some people this oh i want to do maybe dummo for three months or four months and this i say maybe one month you do mondra they say no 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 you know i don't need the mondra because with the mondra i cannot uh, show the magics or miracles you know with dummo i can stay in the naked in the snow you know i can like the ice man you know i can do like ice man and then public will know that i have a power 
you see. So people, they have this kind of mind mentality too. Yeah, so, and I, I would say spiritually, these things are not so healthy and not so stable. So we have to be careful, yeah. And in generally, like uh, I used to, I did myself, you know, lots of very strict retreats. And uh, as I told you, my first three months was very strict. And uh, yeah, now I'm not so much about this, uh, really the strict style, you know. The really the, the essence is to, to understand, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, after my retreat, some of our students are doing retreats. Some people, they tell me, oh, you know, I'm doing mantra like uh, two, three hours every day, you know, this and that. You know, it's a little bit, uh, I feel stressful, but I'm doing this. Then in the past, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, good, good. Keep doing, you know, at least two, three hours for mantra spiritually is good. Now today I say, no, no, don't do it. Just to do one hour, you know, one hour in a relaxed way and you do it well. You know, because then you don't have life stress, right? And then some people, they think, oh, you told me to do it. I said, yeah, now I'm giving you a different uh, advice. <laughs> so I tried to really understand their stress level and, you know, their mental level, then according to that, how they can, you know, practice the Dharma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. I wonder... Um... You know, as you're reflecting on your retreat, what um, advice do you have or reflections do you have? I, I think, um, okay, number one, as I said, you know, the, everybody needs, um, you know, make a foundation. They must have a foundation. And if they do not have foundation, they should do only short retreats, not long retreats. So foundation is important and then psychological checkup is important. And then maybe if it's a first time or new, they should do gradually, you know. So they take one week of retreat and they see, okay, one week is good. And then maybe three weeks, you know, that's good. And then maybe one month, there's this. I, I think this way it's kind of gradual. Gradual is kind of, uh, it's a much healthier and safer, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then also to really understand that, that uh, practitioners, you know, what is their goal? What is their view? What is their reason to do the retreat? You know, that they want to become a guru, that they want to become a lama, that, uh, you know. Yeah, I know some people, they are telling, saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do three years of retreat. After three years, you know, you should prosper to me because I will be a lama. So this kind of motivation is not so nice, right? So that's why I think kind of uh, maybe before retreat, people really, they say, okay, three years of retreat, I need to reflect for a few months, you know, to talk with the friends and the one people who did the retreats and even, yeah, I think in a way, in a simple way, I think, yeah, gradually is important and understanding is very important, you know understanding before the retreat understanding you know what retreat will be how many sessions you do how many hours you do and this and that you know so then in this case if, if we go more like then the pros and cons right you know what's our benefits you know then if you do too much you know you get too much stressed and then maybe you have this and that and uh, do you understand uh, maybe for some people when when they are influenced by Dharma teachers, they say, okay, you know, I can give up my three months of work or job or family or, you know, my connections. Maybe they are kind of uh, after Dharma talk, you know, they are fully charged to this and that. And then, then they don't care about, uh, you know, how their family react, how their friend react. Do you understand? And maybe some of them, they think, okay, you know, I can quit my job for a few months and this and that. And then after retreat, they don't get that job anymore. So you see, so that's why I think it should be a little bit well studied, you know, if it's possible. It's, now it's the modern time, it should be possible. And maybe also 
is not interviewing only the person, also the person's family members, you know. Do you understand what, what this person told his family members, you know? I, I, this is my wish, I just want to do, you know, or you guys uh, support me, it's okay. If uh, don't support me, I don't care. <clears throat> it's not too nice to say that you are family members, right? So, okay, then the, the maybe the most important thing. If somebody goes to a retreat, I think it's very important go to retreat with a harmony, you know, with your friends, with your job, with your family, you have a harmony and then you'd really take your full heart and into the retreat. And then don't stress too much, you gradually train and you make it a flow. So I would say that's maybe the, it's a very key point. Otherwise, some people, they didn't finish something. There's something going around like this, you know. Maybe, I don't know, somebody's sick in their family. So they go to retreat and they're constantly worried about that sick person, right? Which is normal. So then you're constantly worried. You cannot concentrate on the meditation. So do you understand? So that, that kind of harmony, I think it's very important. I know some people are like a divorcing process and, you know, during the divorce process, maybe somebody doesn't, okay, I just go to retreat. And then the divorce paper is coming, the files, you know, police, this and that. I know one case like this too, you know, of course, then you are in the retreat, but uh, you are family, your social connection is very disturbed. Do you understand? So people should not think this is an escape. Well, thank you very much. So my last question to you is, do you have any future plans for more retreats for yourself uh, as you're looking ahead? Do you have anything in mind? Um, yeah, I will do retreats. Uh, actually, my idea is, change. you know, the with the first three months uh, retreat, I was thinking, okay, every year I want to do three months or six months of retreat because one of my teacher, he does like that, but he's a monk, you know. And he doesn't need to worry about his life. You know, he's a very well-known Lama now. And I was thinking like that. But then the second the retreat, I changed. Yes, I don't want to make saying, okay, every year I do something this and that. I go more free flow. And it's possible I do retreat for a few weeks, few months. And, uh, you know, everything is possible. Everything is open. So I don't want to make a plan and then, okay, you know, every year, like a few months, you have to go and retreat and then you have to, then you have to maybe push or stress yourself or others to, you know. So I'm not that kind of mode. And I'm more and more how to find the retreat quality in your ordinary life, in your daily life, you know. So, yeah, we are talking, maybe in my mind is still in retreat. <laughs> so that kind of, you know, so I'm not, uh, in my way of thinking is not, there's a magic place, I need to go there. And, you know, the magic happens one day, somehow like this, you know, if you realize every moment is a perfect magic, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> if, if you, yeah. In the retreat, we are saying mindful breathing, but our lungs are breathing automatically, thanks to our Vajra body, right? So in a way, I, I really like this kind of uh, daily life awareness, you know, daily life awareness, you know? So in this case also, I think, yeah, I just want to say this, you know, some people they do mindful practice, they say, oh, you know, mindful practice in daily life, and then this, Mindful, you know, now I have to be mindful, mindful eating, mindful eating, mindful walking. Sometimes when people, they go to in the meditation and they get stiff. Okay, mindful walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm this and that. It's, it's okay, like a training, but in the life like that, I think that can make us also disabled. Do you understand? You are enjoying food with your friends. You say, oh, I'm mindfully eating. So you say, I have concentration on myself, <laughs> mindful eating. Don't talk to me, mindful eating, mindful eating. So you see, we, I think we need to be mindful in a very relaxed way. We need to have the awareness and the understanding in an open and relaxed way. 
And whatever happens, we need to be flexible. And whatever emotion arises in daily life, we have to liberate them, you know? So, yeah. And uh, I had uh, some emotional, you know, like past kind of some challenging emotions. So in the retreat, sometimes I think this kind of emotions. So that was good, yeah, liberated. <laughs> Actually, that part, you know, the some Patrul Rinpoche is uh, teaching, you know, he says, uh, if you liberate, you are that kind of uh, emotions who stays in your mind. If you liberate one, then you are liberate all of them, something like that. He gives a very simple teaching. So I have to thank to Patrul Rinpoche, you know, he's a uh, uh, great teaching through his uh, book, the things. So that's why I'm saying the intuitive part with reading a book really opening eye and really freeing and liberating was really wonderful you know mm -hmm. so sometimes yeah you are in the re i think it's in the retreat the beautiful part is you take time for yourself right but once you have the experience you know these things then we know we are always with ourselves <laughs> if we know ourselves like now I'm talking to you, but I'm with myself and you are with yourself, right? So, you know, to be with yourself, how to be with yourself. If you are with yourself, you know, so it doesn't matter, you know, when or where or what. You are always there with your awareness. And then let the energy flows how, how it should be flow, right? Mm -hmm. and energy is flowing too much you need you see you know it's going beyond the limit you have to protect too <laughs> something like that yeah 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 well dr nita chanat sang this has been so fascinating thank you very much thank you thank you yeah. for asking me the question thank you thank you for listening to another guru viking podcast for more interviews like these, as well as articles, videos, and guided meditations, visit www.guruviking.com.